this is, this is, this is. Producer Bob, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, actor. And you, have you acted? You've acted, right? Yes. Of course. What were you in? Uh, what was I in? Yeah, where were you in? Where were you in? I don't know. Mm. You like how I messed up and then just just turned it? I meant to say musician heights. and talent. What so were you in? We- Weathering Heights. Weathering Heights. Weathering Heights. Uh, the remake. And it was an MTV movie with Katherine Heigl and Johnny can't remember his last name Mike Driscoll was was in the movie and he has gone on to be in like a, hundreds of things that I've seen but he's what not you, he's not like a you know giant star but he's in tons of stuff what did you do I was the rock star on stage so MXPX was playing on stage shut up what's the name of this movie Wuthering Heights all right and I was gonna I write think, it down I don't I'm gonna, think, I'm gonna get the audio back from you. I could just listen to it again. Okay, yeah, got it. Sure, sure. Weathering Heights. I've never, but... I've never seen it. We're gonna watch it. That's awesome. I don't know if you can find it. I'm sure you can find it. Maybe you can rent it or something like that. I, but... I can find it. You can find it. Okay. <laughs> I can find it. <clears throat> if it exists, if it's real. Sometimes I don't know, man. You, you say some stuff sometimes. And I'm like, mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> what this face? <laughs> you don't trust me? Um, it's like a Berenstein Bears kind of thing. It happened before before social media was what it is now. It maybe happened in, I want to say around 2002. Okay. 2002. Uh, I could be wrong. I mean, maybe it was 2004 or something like that. But um, we went to Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, and we filmed the, the our part, you know, and we... Got the full treatment and wait, was, wait. So they flew you out to Puerto Rico for this movie? Absolutely. Holy yeah. Christ. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So it was like, picture the characters are at a show in, in in a club, and they're like doing their thing. They're talking, and then, you know, they. I think I actually, full disclosure, I never watched the full movie. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I I saw our part and I checked it out and. Uh, <laughs> well, that's the only part that's important, right? Let, let me ask you a question. Um, sure. So I've been doing this uh, this music challenge, I think, for like 360 some day. I'm on, almost to a year where I, like, I, I pick up my guitar every day and just play. Mm-hmm. Every time I record something, man, I, I probably listen to it myself 50 to 100 times. Is that normal? Do you do that? Like, do you play some stuff you recorded over and over again to like, like I'll, I'll put it on in the car. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I drive like two hours a day. And I'll just listen to it I don't, probably like 30 minutes. It could be a two minute clip and I'll just loop it for 30 minutes, just like working on it. Like, is that something that you do at all? Your writing process? Uh, some, yes, yeah, sometimes, but more like 10 minutes, five minutes. So, some of us don't need that much time. We know what we're doing. Is that what you're no, no. going with that? <laughs> you could, I mean, if that's what <laughs> you it is. You spend 30 minutes each, each song? Oh. Yeah. 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 No, I mean. <laughs> That's the thing is, is yes, I, I know what you're saying. Like you're listening to it because you want to see if you like what's happening or if you should add right. to it or what you should yeah. change. Yeah, that's perfectly normal. Perfectly yeah, because I'm doing normal. I'm doing a weird thing right now. Like when I was in a band and I would write music, it was for that band. You know, like you can't if you're in a punk band, you can't write a country song like it just it doesn't work. And I'm not in a band anymore. So I've just been writing what feels good does that make sense so like i'm I'm listening to it a whole lot just trying to i don't know figure out who i am in music sure sure plus you know i i like the way i sound and i'm proud of it so i just keep listening to it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I feel, no. I, i've learned that too if you don't like the song then why are you why are you writing it right correct some people will just keep going even if they don't have any feelings toward it it's 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 more of like okay i just got to get this done it's an obsession at that point but no i think you're right you you know you should want to be doing what you're doing and sometimes i don't like what i'm writing but i I, and i want to keep writing to fix that part right like so it's it's not necessarily it's like i like this part but i don't like this part and so I'll listen to it, kind of like try to block out that part and go, what else could go there? You know, what, what, where can I go from there? But, but at the same time, it's not always, 
it's not always listening, but but when it is, I'll be in the car. And I'll be singing along with it, and then I'll have like a spark will hit me. Uh, oh my! Do you have the windows down? Do you have the part. windows down when you do this? Are your windows if, ever if, down? If, if it's a this? nice day, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Could you imagine if you were like a giant MXPX fan, and you pulled up, <laughs> and there's Mike Carrera singing <laughs> MXPX songs in his car? Somebody's brain could explode with that kind of action. Uh, you know what? I I am I have enough self awareness where I turn down. When I'm like next to people, that's nice of you. But I also do that with even po- if I'm listening to a podcast, I don't want to listen super loud. Oh, crazy guy over here! Like talk, listen to talk radio because that's what it sounds like if you're listening to a podcast. Now, I turn mine down when I get I I turn it up pretty loud. Um, I actually know the number in my car. I always go up to thirty. That's what you're drinking, a Coca Cola. Oh, there's whiskey in it. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Oh yeah. So I was Ep- like, oh, episode four hundred. We have to. <laughs> Um, but I'll come up to like a stoplight or something and I turn mine down. And honestly, it's always because like chances are what I'm listening to is not appropriate for anybody. So I right. always drop the, the volume real quick, real quick. <laughs> are you like, was it like on uh, office space at the beginning of the movie office space? He's listening to the ghetto boys and it's like, you mother. And it's like, oh, yeah, this, like yeah, yeah, super yeah, heavy yeah. gangster rap. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. they say exactly, but he's like, uh, <laughs> turns it down like locks his window locks his door sorry the window that's a whole different thing but anyway episode 400 you've you have learned the difference between a door and a window thanks to <laughs> michael author Herrera. <laughs> yeah yeah so we're really, can, I, we're can, killing. I, can i finish my weathering heights story yes because i'm sure yeah. people are like oh my god you didn't finish that finish it I, I told don't know, you shouldn't have had me on here for 400. I don't know. I'll, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. But <laughs> real quick. All right. Good. Do it. Catherine Heigl goes into the front of the audience and she's dancing and we're playing. And I think the song is maybe play it loud. I'm not sure. Or maybe it's what I'm, I'm not sure what song it is, but <laughs> somebody knows. Right. Uh, but we're playing on stage and she's giving me the eyes and I'm giving her the eyes. And so after the show, she like, you know, pulls me out through the crowd and we go to her car. And the the scene ends with me sitting down in the car and then her opening or just kind of like coming down on me. So it, it doesn't have any like actual graphic sex scenes or anything. I'm sure your wife. They cut loved all it. of that. They cut all of that. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the time, it was like, "Hey, Holly, um, this is." And we were only married like a year or two, maybe, or maybe mm-hmm. one year. I don't even. I like. I don't remember the year. So, um, it was kind of one of those. I know it sucks, but this is my job. So, uh, so did you did you tell her like <laughs> going into it what was going to happen? Of course. I and mean, you, no, no, no. Not, I mean. Yeah, I'm going to have a scene with a, a g- girl, you know, but it wasn't like we're going to have sex on camera. It wasn't yeah. that. Man. It was very respectful. It was chill. It was good. Okay. It was good. Cool. Do you let, let me ask you one more question about music. When you were <laughs> writing, do you ever write in the house with her or do you always like right now? It looks like are you in Texas right now? It looks like you're in Texas. Um, I can't. Confirm it's dark. nor deny, but it is uh, it is dark <laughs> in here. So you're in a room where your wife is not at, right? But when you're writing music, are you around her a lot? Because my poor wife, man, we we have this small house, so every time I'm practicing, she hears it mm. like every day. And the problem is, I'm not good, right? So she hears like mediocre stuff constantly. Like, do you ever have to deal with that? Like. Does she ever come up and go, come on, dude, really? Again today? <laughs> uh, yes. And um, fortunately for me, though, I have the studio in Bremerton. In Waco, I have a separate studio, a garage made into a studio. And it's not like the same kind of studio, but basically if you're writing or just playing guitar, you just need a room. You need some yeah. pri- privacy is nice. Um, so most of the time, fortunately for me, I have just I'm just by myself. And most nice. of most of my work day is me alone, um, unless it's like 
practice with the band or like when the band's doing something. But aside from the band, like the day to day is just me by myself doing all the things, all the things I got to do or, or putting off all the things I need to do. A little, uh, <laughs> little procrastination happens now and again, but, but with songwriting, you know, I just get in, if I can get into that headspace and I get into that routine, it's the best. I can just do my thing, play over and over. But like you said, when you're writing, a lot of those ideas are terrible. A lot, and you're, and you're, you're you're doing the same thing over and over and over, trying to like massage a part and try to figure out how am I going to sing this lyric? I really want this lyric, but it's not sounding right. And so you'll just all I will do it over and over, almost like a loop. And that's probably that's probably not the main reason I I do it alone, um, but it would drive her crazy if if I had to like just be doing these loops over and over and. Like I said at the beginning, yes, she sometimes tells me give it a rest because when I have the guitar in the house and I just pick it up for a second, I might play something, I'll keep playing that same thing and I get fixated <laughs> on it, kind of like OCD in a way. Yeah, no, I get it. No, I'm I that's that's what I was talking about. Yeah. 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 So I still torture her a little bit here and there. It's it's the kids It's good for the relationship. Yeah, the kids nowadays, you know, <laughs> used to uh when they were younger, they used to love me to play acoustic guitar. And then at some point they were like, all right, no, no more, no more. And now that, yeah. now I think they're back to, they can dig it for just a little bit. And, and my daughter, Sailor, she's, she's taking guitar lessons from Jack Parker, by the way, he, uh, from Tumble Down. And, uh, which is great. Cause then she comes back and I just practice with her and I play, oh, play with cool. her and, and she's just kind of, she knows like four chords right now, I think. Yeah. And, um, does a little bit of, you know, scale stuff. Do you know scales? Do you ever play scales? No, no, I am music illiterate. Like I, I literally it's, I pick it up and just listen. And the worst part is my dad, he, uh, he used to build, um, like storage buildings. And we were at home one night, man, and he didn't come home. And my mom was with him at work. And, like, this was before, like, cell phones and stuff. I mean, we probably had cell phones. We definitely didn't have the internet. So we couldn't get up with him. And we just didn't know what happened. It was me, my sister, my little brother, and we're all sitting at the house. And we get a phone call from, I think it was somebody my dad works with. And he's like, what's going on with your dad? We're here at the shop, and there's blood everywhere. And we're... And like, we don't know. So Whoa. then we hang up with this guy and now we're in complete panic mode. Cause I mean, we, we have no way there's, there's no texting that didn't even exist at the time. Like there's, there's none of that. And it turns out what had happened. My mom actually called me, uh, I think shortly after that phone call, my dad was cutting a piece of wood on a uh, table saw and took a couple fingers off. Ouch. So my grandfather played music. I'm, I'm getting to where we're going. <laughs> my grandfather played music, taught my dad. Like, my whole family is just very musical. Mm -hmm. But then when my dad started teaching me, he didn't have all of his fingers. So I learned how to play notes as if my fingers were missing. And here recently, I've been working on correcting that. But, yeah, it's just been – it's by ear. Like, there's no scales. There's nothing, man. We we live out in the country, and we pick up guitars, and we play. Um. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm okay. I, I have rhythm, but that's about it. Um, my brother is phenomenal. He's a fantastic guitar player, but, uh, yeah, nice. everybody plays, but yeah, I, I don't know scales. I can't read anything, man. I just, I, I try to learn a note and push forward. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's cool to see my daughter just actually being able to play a chord and she can't play power chords yet. So it's, it's, she's got a ways to go. But um, not worried about it, you know. She'll she'll figure it out, and uh, when she does, then it's really gonna move faster. It'll yeah. like pick up. Funny thing, funny little story about today. Actually, today, um, it's been a rough a rough day because this is we're recording this a little early, and it's the day that Russia invaded Ukraine. So it's kind of heavy. It's a heavy yeah. day, and uh, you know I I don't even know what to say. It's honestly like heartbreaking you know seeing some of the images coming out of ukraine so who knows what will happen by the time this comes out uh we'll be in march it'll be like march uh sixth or something yeah, like something. that um anyway but today you know i i really 
I really had a huge pick me up. Something amazing happened. My kids, I walk into the living room and my kids go, I had been working out in the garage here. Uh, and my kids go, put on some rock music, daddy. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, okay, they don't, you know, usually it's like, we don't talk about Bruno or something like Dude, that recently. Oh my God. I haven't seen that movie yet, but I know <laughs> almost neither. all the words to every song. Yeah, me too. Uh, in, in Canto, Enchanto, something like that. In Canto. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, what do I do? Okay. I'm not going to put on MXPX because I, you know, they've heard MXPX. So I put on something they haven't heard yet. What would, what would be like awesome to hear for the first time ever? And I put on responsibility. Beast- yeah. <laughs> yes. No. I put on Beastie Boys. Oh, okay. Which, which song? song? Yes. Well, which song? Fight for your right to party. And it comes on. It's about to be rebellious. And they look around. It was like, is this a Kool-Aid commercial or something? Where's where's the Kool-Aid man? Is he going to bash through the the wall? Because they start rocking to this song. They're like, wow. And they're like, yeah. Going crazy. And I was just like amazed that any song, I mean, these kids, you know, they see everything, right? You know, and so it was just like, wow, they're really, really into this. I should be a DJ. You, a kid DJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you have too many jobs already. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, what's funny is the same thing kind of happened to me just the other night. I had one of those same kind of encounters um, up here in. Uh, so. Upstairs, I've got my room, uh, the podcast room, and two other rooms for the kids. I've got two boys. They sleep in the same room on bunk beds, and a girl, she has her own room. Well, the one of the boys is four, so he's not in school yet. The two other kids, they're seven. They're in school. And uh, a lot of times, the four-year-old will get a bath during the day while the kids are at school. And then at nighttime, it's, you know, bathe the seven-year-olds. So... I've got two showers up here, and what I typically do is I'll put one kid in the shower over here and then one kid over here, and I have to, like, run back and forth to, like, if they need, I don't know, whatever. Well, what do you do with the four-year-old? Because the, the wife's downstairs cooking dinner. So I'm running baths. I've got the four-year-old, and I'm, I'm handling it. So in my room, I've got a projector set up where I has got this big blank wall, and that's just where we, like, watch movies and stuff. And... I asked, I asked the four-year-old, I was like, hey, you, we, do you want to watch something? And he goes, can we watch music? And I was like, yeah, for sure. We can watch music. So I loaded up YouTube, and I was like, what do you want to hear? And he requested a rancid song. And I was like, yes, yes, child. <laughs> Try not to be too excited about it. Like, okay, yeah, I, know. Yeah, I guess um, so. Yeah, we got, we find that. They've got like three <laughs> songs that I allow them to listen to from from Rancid because you know some of them are definitely inappropriate. But uh, he loves Fall Back Down and yeah, and I, good. He had heard the music a whole lot, but this was like the first night that he saw the video. And uh, he goes, "Everybody has mohawks," and I'm like, "Yeah." And it, what was kind of cool about it was uh, they didn't think it was weird. Yeah, like, yeah. They noticed that they you know they had mohawks and stuff, but like. You know, the tattoos, the studs, all that stuff. They didn't even mention it. Like, it was it was kind of awesome. Because I know when I would play that stuff, you know, when I was younger, my parents would see it and be like, this is the devil's music. But uh, <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It yeah, was kind of no. nice to see how innocent and, like, just carefree children are. Give yeah. it a few years. The world will taint them in some way. Of, some way. of course, yeah. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be all over after that. But yeah, enjoy it while, while you can. Enjoy it. That's it. That's what it's all about is just re, re uh, sorry, reflecting and realizing that those moments happen because they happen real quick. You know, if you're, if you're too busy, if you're not engaged, if you're not really locked into your home life, that's something, honestly, I really wasn't locked into for, for a while, different points of different points in my life for sure. But even with the kids, like there was a time when MXPX was super busy. I was touring all over all over the world, in fact, and I don't know, for some reason I, in my mind, it was just like, well, I'm doing my job, blah, 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 but like now, I think now that I've lived more of that and I've been able to reflect on that, I've realized, you know, life, you only get one life and your job may be cool and important or this or that, but 
your kids, man, they don't care about that. You no. Know? And, and yeah. And so when they, you know, by the time I'd be like finished with all this, they're going to be grown up. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to stay detached. And, and I'm a very detached person. Like I said, like I work alone all the time. You can imagine I'm in my head writing songs. It's like, why does he sound so weird when he writes, you know, things? It's because I'm a weirdo. I'm sitting in a dungeon right now. See me? You know, so it's, uh, you know, so uh, obviously doing this podcast helps me be human, helps me like get to talk to my friends. It's uh, because otherwise there's no reason to call you, Bob, right? Like, thank you. Appreciate that. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, like, I should be spending time with my family. I should be working. And then there's no time. Like, you know, there's not much time for for much else. Um, you know, there's I mean, hobbies. My hobby is my work. So I just do more of that or things that sort of like I think fitness, I, I lump into work. It's not my job. It's not work, but it's part of what I have to do or want yeah. to do to be able to do my work. So it's got to like, be like that it's got to be really motivational for you as well. I know that, uh, so there, there's something that I'm going to be, I, I might be working on here soon in, in the future. I don't think I'm supposed to say anything about it, but, uh, I found out about it in December maybe. And my first thought was, Hmm, a lot of people might see me. I should probably lose some weight. <laughs> and that, that's a legit thing. Um, yeah, and if it's a TV thing, you know the ad, the camera adds ten pounds. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's I'm not worried about ten pounds, Mike. <laughs> ten, <laughs> ten pounds is not a big deal. But uh, yeah, that was um, that was sort of how we started back again. Um, my wife and I lost a ton of weight in 2018 or 19, maybe 19. It was before the pandemic happened, and uh, the pandemic happened, and I we, we all gained weight again. But uh, yeah, I was talking to her. It was in December and we were like, we got to really, you know, get back, get back to it. I found that a lot of people in general, like will have a period of time when they get overweight and then later on in life, if they can figure it out, it's usually, you know, our age, it's usually, you know, I'm not, I don't know exactly how yeah. old you are, but, but, you know, just once you are living for a while, let's just say that, let's just be vague, but <laughs> A lot like notice your 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 mother in law or your you know your aunt, you know Sally probably got like lost some weight. You're like, how did she get so skinny all of a sudden? It's just because like maybe when you're older you don't you don't have the appetite you used to have. I don't know. There's different reasons for everything, but for me, I still love to eat. I I love it, and so yeah, it's the best. Not working out is 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 not an option for like a regular like lifestyle like. Injuries, of course, you know, I've had injuries over the years, so I ha certain times I'm not working out as much. Somebody actually asked me, uh, I think it was uh, somebody on Facebook or something on the on the group, on actually on the podcast group. Um, anyway, I, I can't remember exactly who it was, but it's somebody, I know, I know you, so if you're listening, I know who you are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice guy. In I think he's a Texas guy, but anyway, or maybe he's a Cali guy, uh, but he was asking you know, do you still work out and post videos and stuff? Cause I used to post not videos. I used to post like pictures of like me at the gym with my, with Tom or something like that. And I just, after a while, it's kind of like, okay, I'm done. I'm over that. But I still had been going to the gym after that forever. So it was just, um, during the pandemic for sure. There was a stint where I wasn't going to the gym cause it was closed. And then, uh, with, with injuries here and there, what's the, what's the deal with the glasses, by the way? For those listening, he Bob's had <laughs> three different pairs of glasses on so far. Let me tell let me tell you what I'm doing, man. Um, I feel bad. Like, you you sent me this message and and you're like, hey, you you're gonna be on for 400. It's like, a bad idea. So now I'm like, I got to figure out a way to make it worth it, right? Yeah. So I yeah, figured I'd I act so. weird and do things visually, and uh, what might happen is people are gonna that are listening are gonna go, what? And they're gonna go to your YouTube page. To see what's going on. That was my okay. point. I want to bring. I want to bring some viewers to your stuff. Nice. Yeah. Not a lot of people listen on the YouTube because they're mainly listening on on just audio. But um, and it's not something I even advertise. It's just I just throw I've noticed it up. that I don't advertise anything. But <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I know. It, it, there's just not enough time in the day, and yeah, I, I do this podcast for fun. And if I did it for a job, you would see a lot more. 
you'd see a lot more going on. But, um, you know, I, I, thanks to everybody listening. And if you do go to the YouTube page, please subscribe, hit that notification bell. Don't worry. I'm not posting a lot. So (laughs) I feel like I don't want to be bothered. I swear I'm not posting a lot. It would just be great to get you to get you to have us like in your subscriptions. Um, it always helps, man. I mean, everybody's asking for views and subscriptions and this and that, but the bottom line is, 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 uh, I try to really focus on what matters to me the most in life and and it's just not advertising the YouTube. I, I hate to say it. I hate to say it. But uh, I've been focused on MXPX. We've been working. I've been doing stuff behind the scenes um, and playing a little bit of waiting game too. A lot of waiting for for things to happen. We're not, all not we're a bad. All, we're all waiting on some stuff. No bad news or anything. Yeah. No, just just things things take some time and also just kind of making plans plans. Plans within plans, and, and it really takes some time. And now that we actually have a little time, not a bad thing to take. Take a little time. So I like it. Episode four hundred. Honestly, Bob, it's not about always about how big or who the guest is. It's about what they can bring to the audience. And I feel like you are amazing at bringing something good to the audience. Well, some value. You. And and I like that you know me well and you can ask questions of me as well. Um, it was funny, you know, uh, having uh, s- some, of, some of my favorite people like Anthony Green uh, last year had him on and great guy, really knows how to talk, knows how to tell stories. And he would ask me questions about, you know, what I was doing because he's a fan <laughs> of MXPX. So it's like, yeah, 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 for sure. It all, it's always fun, you know, for people to feed my ego, you know, flattery will get you everywhere. So (laughs) did I, Hey, did I tell you by the way, how handsome you look today? (laughs) You know, um, the truth behind or not the truth, but a a main part of the glasses thing, as well as, uh, the, the robe I'm wearing, I don't wear this unless I'm podcasting. It's, it's my wife's. It's weird. Right. Um, Mm. I've, I've started learning something about myself. I'm, I'm 36 years old and I, I'm a weird person. That's just all there is to it. But my whole life, I've kind of taken the stuff that I thought was too weird and kept it away from people. Mm-hmm. And, and I found myself limiting that to a lot of things. And it, it, I probably didn't have as much fun in life as I should have. You know what I mean? And it's taking mm-hmm. me a very long time to go, who cares? I like Saturday Night Live. I like real stupid comedy. So to me, you know, when I told my wife, I was like, yeah, I'm going to put on this robe and I'm going to wear like 30 different pair of glasses. And she was like, what? What's wrong with you? And I'm like, you know what? I like it. It's yeah. it's funny to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the moment that you stop talking and go, what's the deal with the glasses? That was a joke for myself. And I'm just, I'm to this point in life where I just want to have fun. And I hope you know, this episode turns out good. I hope people dig it. And, uh, I do a lot of self deprecating comedy kind of, um, you know, the joke about me not shouldn't be the one on here, but really when it comes down to it, I'm just trying to have some fun, man. Like, I don't know how this episode is going to turn out for you, but I'm having a blast and that's just where I'm at in life. Yeah. I'm having a good time. It's very meta. You know, we're talking about the episode in the episode. Yeah. yeah. We should have commentary we should do another episode of commentary about the episode. You know what's funny is uh, when I when I first got on here, I was processing some of the other episodes, so it was running already. So I was editing one of your episodes while podcasting on one of your episodes while talking about your episodes. I think I'm going to start, like something's going to come out of my ears soon. Like it might be too much, man. That just pretty much uh, describes... <laughs> our lives today, our culture, our society. It's just yeah. too much. I mean, I was thinking about like 2020 and, and when everything kind of went down, it was Kobe. Kobe went down and it was almost like it took the wind out of everybody's sails in a way. But here we are, what, three years, well, two years later, three years. It's, it feels like three years, but it's two years later and it, it um, there's so much has happened yet. Eh, can't even think of anything that's happened. It makes then. podcasting difficult. 
the pandemic has made podcasting difficult for sure. And everybody started a podcast during the pandemic. I know. Not everybody, but it's weird because it's like, okay, oh, I, wanted to, I wanted to have that person on my podcast, but now they have their own podcast. I wonder if it'll be weird. They'll be like, well, I'm trying to do my own thing. And da, 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 da. I think it's only weird if you're trying to make like large amounts of money. Like, I think that's the only time it gets weird because for, for me, I, I just like podcasting. Like, I, I'll I can, talk, I'll I talk can, to anybody. I can completely understand why anybody would start a podcast because I did it. And I could completely understand why somebody would start a podcast during the pandemic because they were bored, especially musicians. You know, I'm talking music because we're kind of in that group, that bubble, if you will. But. I'm sure that a bunch of doctors started podcasts during the pandemic. A bunch of uh, grocery store s s workers, you know, randomly. Like, I don't know. I mean, like food service people maybe started a podcast when they, I don't know. Can you tell me? Have you seen anything like that? But, but um, it's millions. It's just so many yeah. because there's, n there was nothing else to do. And it's like, you, it's easy. It's literally so easy, even though whoa, I... Whoa, 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 whoa. It's, it's, it's not... E it's easy to start. It's, this is not easy. I'm like, not don't... saying it's easy to have a successful podcast, okay? I'm saying it's easy to do a podcast, which is it literally is recording yourself talking, and then putting it on whatever, you know, on, on all the places. YouTube is obviously a very really easy place. But I remember when I first started the podcast, I was trying to figure out, you know, you kind of have these grand ideas about people you'll get and this and that. And, uh, I was on a flight. I was in, I was in first class, got upgraded, I'm sure. But, uh, I never buy first class tickets, by the way. Uh, crazy waste of <laughs> what? money. Why do people always say that? They were like, I was on first class, but you know, I don't want to buy first class. Tickets. So I was talking I just to make nobody, just so everybody knows, just so everybody well, knows. I'm not pretentious or anything. I'm just... a punk rocker and it's not cool to be. <laughs> To be flaunting money. Have, but, you uh, that, have you seen that meme? I'm going to stop you. Have you seen that meme on the internet of uh, it's this guy, tight jeans, ripped open, long hair, leather jacket, and it's like Metallica fan. And then right beside it, it's this singer, and he's like standing outside a gap or something. He's got flip flops on and. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I think I did see that. So go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yes, yes, yes. While I was sitting next to this guy, this gentleman, and normally I don't talk, but I, this is years ago. This is probably 10 years ago, easily. Well, right when I started the podcast, so 2013, probably 2013, or I was thinking about starting it. So I was like, maybe this will be a, a good podcast thing. So I was talking to this guy and I just so happened to had taken a edible, like a brownie or something <laughs> like that. And you took it from the guy on the plane or you ate it? No, I ate it. Okay. Um, I was like, you can be stealing edibles from people on a plane, Mike. No, right before I got on the flight, I <laughs> ate it. It was a long flight. It was like, it was, I don't remember where it was. I think it was like Seattle to Florida or something like that. It was like cross country. And so I start talking to this guy and I'm just like, you know, the sound in my, in my ears is just the plane is like, And uh, <laughs> this guy is, is, uh, he's basically like going, th oh, I was going to Washington DC, remembering my story as I tell it. I didn't know I was going to tell the story. So he's, we're heading to Washington DC because this guy is going to pitch, uh, this think tank, the, um, he bought his first, first class ticket. <laughs> they did, um, yeah. the, the group that was bringing him out to, to, uh, pitch. Uh, he was basically he he worked for like a very small company that was trying to get a military contract for like some sort of like software system for military grade weapons and defense stuff. And that was a time. And he was yeah, so like he was a very smart dude, and he knew he wasn't like you know he he was probably the guy in, in the garage inventing things like he's yeah. building whatever it is so like he knew so much and i was just like talking to him and i'm like on these edibles and i had no idea what was going on <laughs> but i recorded the whole i was like hey can we record this conversation because i have a podcast and blah 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 i tried to record it on my 
iPhone. Oh my God, it did not work. I actually have the recording, but you can't barely hear anything. It's just like all. Sure. We believe you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't remember the name of the group. It was like, what's the, what's a, what are those, tr- those giant trees? Sequoia. So the Sequoia group or something like that, it was like some sort of even either think tank or some, you know, thing over in D.C. This very political entity. Yeah. And so he was going to them to get <clears throat> his contract. Anyway, millions of dollars. Da, 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 da. And I'm sitting here trying to like talk to this guy with an iPhone and be like, yeah, I'm going to put this on my podcast. <laughs> and it's just <laughs> perfect example of like listening to it later and going, what was I thinking? Like, what am I oh doing? My God. He was probably some dude who was like a, a CEO of a vacuum company or something. He probably got off that plane and was like, you're not going to believe what happened to me. So there's this guy, right? I'm pretty sure he was high and he thinks I'm in the military and he tried to record me with his phone, but I don't think it works. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what a cool story. Well, you know, good. I still have the recording to prove it, but the re- the conversation was s- the most interesting thing I'd ever, I like he was telling me how the internet was built and how it how it works oh. and about the cables running under the ocean like I'm like what <laughs> what I didn't know that there's cables running under the ocean apparently no there's idea. cables under the ocean the Atlantic huh. Ocean huh I wonder can we can we Google that are there cables running I mean, under I'm the sure. Atlantic <laughs> You yeah, can't just can assume that. You know what? I, I, you know what? I work for you. I'll Google it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pull, pull that up, Bob. <laughs> yes, sir, Mike. Right away, buddy. You got to well, keep talking, though. We got. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, I, the funny thing is, 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 I tried to do a podcast with you. Well, actually, I released this podcast. I've, I've, I've done so many podcasts with Yuri, but one of them I did in the airport. Same kind of deal on an iPhone, and the episode is very short, but it was probably released about a year and a half ago. What did you find out? Okay, so uh, subsea or submarine cables are fiber optic cables that connect countries across the world laid on the ocean floor. What year? I mean, could we just cut the ones hanging around Russia? Can we Jeez. just cut them? I'm sure they've Wait, already just... thought of that. <laughs> oh, God. Don't let Bob run anything. <laughs> don't give him any ideas. They're going to do that to us. No. Oh. I mean, that's... oh, don't say that, dude. I'm freaked out, man. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is like anything could happen. My kid's like, are we in war? I'm like, no, no not yet. And my, ho- and my wife's like, don't say anything. Just like, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> just like, don't want to freak out the kids, you know? Do and you there's no walk. What's that? Do you ever walk away from something that happened with your kids? Like maybe, I don't know, maybe they got in trouble for something. Um, they did something dumb. I don't know. And you handle the situation, right? And then you 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 talk to your wife afterwards and go, so was that, was that right? Did I handle that the right way? Like, <laughs> are you unsure sometimes with your parenting? Most of the time. And a lot of times I do it wrong. And so she has to say like, hey, take it easy or comfort or that's not help. That's not helping is actually the number one line I get. That's not helping. But that, does she say that in front of the kids or like some? Yeah. She, so she handles business. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got and it. I'm understood. Like, understood. I'm the emo. I'm like another kid to be honest. Like I'm like, yeah, whether it's I'm on the spectrum or whatever, but I react to things not in the best way. And, and to me, it's like, well, yeah, but they just need to learn this and then they're fine. But because I'm thinking of it and it, sometimes too emotional and sometimes not emotional enough. Because when, you know, I get frustrated if one of our kids gets hurt, you know, I'm like, well, you shouldn't have been doing this. You shouldn't have been doing that. <laughs> and my wife's like, no, they just need comfort. They need a hug. They need everything to be okay because it wasn't, that's going to happen. Kids are going to get hurt the solution is not to tell them, well, don't do that then <laughs> because it's like, yeah, duh, but it's too late, <laughs> man. My, uh, we, we kind of messed up on something as parents. Um, we probably waited too long to let the kids take the training wheels off their bikes. Mm. Um, but mm. we don't, 
I don't go outside a lot, Mike. So why do we, we don't go outside and ride bikes all the time? It's really bad. I'm admitting horrible, horrible things about myself. But uh, so they made some kids, uh, they made some friends in the neighborhood. And there's this one little girl and she came over and she's a little bit younger than my daughter. And she didn't have training wheels. So my daughter came and she's like, um, when can I take my training wheels off? And I was like, you can take them off whenever you want. I said, wow. we'll do it right now. I was like, yeah, for sure. I said, but uh, here's the thing. If daddy takes the training wheels off, daddy don't put the training wheels back on. Like, that's just, that's going to be a new step in life. Are you sure you want to do that? And she goes, yeah. And it turns out she doesn't want to do that at all. She's not, <laughs> she's not having fun with it. And, uh, man, the thing is, she rides a scooter, like a little razor, mm -hmm. and she's really good. Like, she has super good balance. Um, the very first time that uh, I, I went to, you know, push her on her bike without her training wheels, you know, I held the handlebar, I put my hand on her back, and I'm I'm pushing her. And because of, I guess, the, the razor, her balance was fantastic. And she rode, I don't know, a good 25, 30 yards. Like she, like on the first try, she nailed it. But what she can't do is like start. So like, you know, you got to push the pedal down and if you're going too slow, you fall over. Right. Mm -hmm. And she just won't push the pedal down and go fast enough to start. And I know that once she starts, you know, she's golden. So yeah, I'm on that same, I think level where you are, where I'm just, I just want to be like, just push the damn pedal down and go like, <laughs> Yeah. What are you doing? And she's <laughs> she just hasn't learned it yet. And I'm and and as a father, I'm like like I'm wanting to pull my hair out, but you can't do that, you know. You you can't yell at them because they won't, you know, they're not learning. But uh, God, it's just sometimes it's frustrating. And yeah, my wife would have pulled me aside. She's like, you just gotta let her do it. So let her go. So then I was like, yeah. okay. And you know, and then I was like, let me push you again and let her ride for a little while. That way she gets excited about it. But they're they're learning. But man, being a parent, God, dog, I don't know anything. It's hard. It's really Nobody hard. Warned, I didn't realize how many how many buttholes I would have to clean that aren't mine. Like it's yeah. like people don't mention that to you. Like, oh, being a parent's great. It's gonna be great. And then like <laughs> like a year in, you're like, what? That just <laughs> means you had too many kids. I too, too many. Unless too one butthole is one too many, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I might put that clip on the end of yeah. this episode. Yeah. It's going to go off. It's going to be you going, one butthole is just too many. <laughs> one butthole is one too many. But, yeah. Uh, no, having, I, kids, having kids is gross. It's gross. It's not for the faint of heart. And and it toughens you up. It toughens yes. you up. You know, if you're skittish about things and you're, you're a parent, then you something's missing. You're not taking proper care of your children. That's what I think. I said this, uh, it. Done. I said it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitive you know what? statement. It, that's, yeah. No. Say it. If you're, if it's easy for you, then you're doing something wrong. Right. That's a better way of saying it. Yeah. I wish I would have said that. Yeah. Or <laughs> you have a lot of money and you, you got people there helping you. <laughs> sure. Okay. There's, that's not and wrong. That, and, and, and that but, might still okay. be wrong. That's still, that might, still might it can wrong. still be wrong. Yeah. For sure. There's probably there's probably like rich people that are good parents that have help because yeah. they still do have to do certain things, but then they are sure to spend time with their kids. I would say that's a that's a minority. I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume that and do all the things we should do. Rich famous people are assholes. <laughs> they don't let's not go, let's children. not go that far. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. Let's not go that far. That's going to be in some article somewhere. My career from MX. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. But, uh, you know, gotcha. it's just a lot of it is probably just because they don't realize the repercussions of not like how much your kids really need you. But maybe they yeah. didn't have they didn't have those feelings when they were kids. Maybe a few kids don't need their parents. Like there's always like a crazy kid that doesn't need parents. Or always like pushes them away, but for the most part, most kids are like clingy to the parents, yeah, or at least to the mom. I was definitely a watch me kid, and I I do it now. Like I'm I'm still doing it now. Mm -hmm. Like if I do something real cool, I'll send it to my dad. I'm like, check this out, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, 
Um, there's a, I think my mom has a, a video at Christmas at one point and I came up and I danced by or something. And then I, I walked away and I heard my mom tell somebody like, he is such a ham. <laughs> and I had to, I had to go back to her cause I watched the video and I was like, what does that mean? Is that cause I'm fat? Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, Are you, do you want to eat me? <laughs> but, uh, no, that's what it was. I, I was, I was that kid. Like I was always, I don't know, trying to impress people, I guess. And I wasn't really good at anything. That's that's the weird part. Yeah, it's mediocre well, at things. Isn't that Probably. like biological? You know, humans trying to impress, at least males trying to impress females or just people in general. But yeah. we get that bug in us, I think, naturally. Dude, my wife is not a fan of Valentine's Day. And am I. We, we were, <laughs> we were, t- Wait, we are were you? talking about it. You're a Am fan? I? Me? Yeah. <laughs> you love it? I, I like Valentine's Day. Um, I don't like, I don't care about it for myself, but I think it's super cheesy and I have fun with that. Okay. So okay. for, for Valentine's Day this year, my wife called me and, uh, she said pretty much do not bring me any Walmart flowers and candy because you know, you feel like you have to because the world says that you have to. Like she's just mm-hmm. got, you know, she's got something about it. Um, but also, I'm not. Is I'm that not a, get to go home? Is that like a? Yeah, don't get me anything, but you better get me something. Right, a hundred percent. So <laughs> she went to. Uh, we didn't go anywhere. We stayed here at the house. But uh, she went to pick up the kids from school, and I like I left work just a little bit early, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh no, you know, actually, I wasn't even working that day. I was helping with uh, my dad. And I went by Walmart and just bought the cheesiest Valentine's Day decorations. This big, like, plastic heart tablecloth cover and, like, springy hearts. And I hung them from the ceiling. It was awful. Awful. And I decorated it in the time that she went to pick up the kids and come back home. So I cooked her some steak. Uh, I think we had canned green beans, so nothing like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I bought these heart-shaped plates. It was so dumb. Was it and a heart-shaped steak? It was not a heart-shaped steak. You gotta cut that out. But uh, it was just, it was dumb, and that's why I liked it. I liked the silliness to it, and mm. I think because I didn't try to make it romantic, she liked it too. Like, she was like, oh, he's doing this, but he's kind of doing it his way and not you know, what everybody thinks you should do. What should you do? I think what you're supposed to do and what, what she finds weird about it is, uh, you know, the, the male species, when it comes to Valentine's day, when you walk into Walmart, it's just a bunch of dudes. And this is from my wife. Like this is her idea. It's a bunch of dudes walking away, going, walking around going, all right, how do I get laid? (laughs) Like I gotta (laughs) buy the the, the biggest and best thing. She, she refers to us as uh, peacocks on Valentine's day. Just the, Get the big diamond, the big box of chocolates, the big card, and all in hopes of, you know, ending at a certain point of the night that uh, oh, yeah. we're, we're dumb enough to spend tons of money <laughs> to make happen. And yeah. uh, she's, she's, you know, she's not down for it. So I did something super cheesy, and she loved it. Good. It's the thought that you put into it, especially when you're actually in a regular relationship, or uh, regular, I mean just a relationship, Rather than uh, and maybe you're dating somebody new or something. That's what I mean. Sorry, an yeah, ongoing yeah. relationship. That's what I mean by regular, like married or living with somebody for a long time. Like you kind of get used to each other, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thoughtfulness is what really makes a difference. Not like, just doing anything, almost right? Doing anything yeah. in such a a crazy world where you just kind of have this hedonic treadmill you know dominant adaptation where things just get old after a while and it, and it becomes harder and harder to put the effort in i think the older you get the longer you are with somebody maybe everybody's a little different so you got to do these things to keep it spicy <laughs> you need to be careful man your wife, wife might listen to this uh no i know well, i'll be all right I, I could i could I'll see be all right. in your face I'll, yeah <laughs> you'll be all right <laughs> just keep singing i'm not and saying dancing, i'm right? not talking about my personal <laughs> life i'm talking about i'm generalizing gotcha. basically yeah yeah but um really i got so- real lucky man um i in like 
I was friends with my wife before we got married mm, mm. and which I think made it really good for us. Like we, I mean, we have a podcast together. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's not a lot of married couples that would be willing to sit down and just have long conversations together like all the time. In I know public. That sounds, yeah. In public. I know that sounds ridiculous, but oh, I don't know, man. I see. I, I know that there's a lot of guys that go out to the bar and hang out with their friends and, you know, spend a lot of time away from home. And I'm, I'm not that person. Like I, I enjoy hanging out with my wife. Like I, I got real lucky, man. Real lucky. <laughs> that she said yes you know I, what i'm saying i have a like, feeling your wife's gonna listen to this <laughs> she, she, she doesn't she doesn't listen to podcasts wow she doesn't listen, she doesn't listen to ours okay okay like, all right she has then no think... idea how the edits turn out she doesn't she doesn't even like she doesn't even ask me like how many views are we we getting mm -hmm. um uh in i think 2017 yeah, 2017, we hit 10,000 downloads. So that was like our first like, oh, this is really like happening. And uh, that is the only time that she's ever even known. Like, yeah, <laughs> like she just doesn't care, man. She doesn't listen to podcasts. She, I mean, it's it's really awesome. That's not her thing. She's not on social media. Maybe that's why she's so happy. Yeah. Is that it? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> she's figured it out. You know, the rest I, of us haven't. I, I would say I'm on social media a lot less. Um, I try to be on there and make it make it worth being on there when I'm on there, and then I get off. And, and I think it's important to to do that if you're feeling like it's just me messy. It's just like constant, you know, never ends. You know, when it, when it comes to like band stuff, that makes me happy to see like, okay, somebody's doing something cool, awesome. But I don't know. It's like to constantly see negativity negativity or even things that you, you can't experience right now like yeah. like some super super like posh island video or something you're like okay i've been there yeah okay oh, cool but i don't want to see that right now i'm like it's freezing right now <laughs> so like all of these things bug people you know like even if it's a positive thing if you're stuck working and you like look on your phone and see somebody diving into this beautiful ocean, you're like, ah, you're like, you're kind of like, man, maybe you're not mad or negative about it, but you're like, it, it probably does something in your brain and thinking what's wrong with me. You know, <laughs> what's, why can't I have a life like that? And, and I'm here to say people, it's all, <laughs> it's all mostly lies. I mean, there are people <laughs> diving into oceans, but it's, you know, man, you know, I, there, I, am I, I right though? How, it's like, you're, you're right. Yeah, you're right. And, and here's the truth. This is the honest truth about everything. Um, obviously there's always going to be some outlier, some kind of like weird scenario that someone made things happen in their life. But for the most part, you either do a really good job entertaining people and you make a career that way, or you come to work with the rest of us. Like <laughs> that's the two things, man. Um, or investing, or like. Wait, I said there were outliers. There's some weird yeah. some things that people make money, but for the most part, for everybody, like, you know, you either go to work or you, you know, put on a show. Like that's that's just where we are. Um, I. And that's changing a little bit with TikTok and like things yeah. like this, but the, but also that's still. Those are still outliers, the people that do really well on TikTok, the people that make a lot of money on things like that. And and TikTok, believe me, it'll crash and burn eventually, you know, but like everything, you know, Instagram has changed so much over the years, right? Like it's nowhere near what it was. You don't get the reach anywhere near what you used to get. Um, yet we're still just all just going about our same old business as if nothing's changed. Same old posts and this and that and. I'm not saying don't do them and enjoy, enjoy your life as much as you can. And if a little bit of frivolous, you know, scrolling makes you happy for a minute, I get it. Do but you, I, do you look at the TikTok? No, I don't have TikTok. Uh, MXPX does. So I can't, I, I, don't, I don't condemn it, but I just, I hate <laughs> that it's, I hate that it's pretty much just dumb crap constantly. And, and, you know, the funny thing is, is like, 
I heard that the algorithms in, you know, China, in China, you're not even allowed to be on social media for more than like two hours a day. And so you, you get Might limited. Not be a bad I'm not, I, I'm not, not for, bad I'm not for less freedom. Let's put it, make it very clear. <laughs> I'm always been about freedom and independence, but the one cool thing they are doing is the algorithm in China is, is promoting education and why, why I love my kids, uh, what I love about my kids seeing things on the internet is because mostly what they're seeing is, is, um, YouTube videos, like, uh, like YouTube kids stuff, but Rhodes, my youngest, he loves to watch educational videos. He doesn't realize they're educational, but he's constantly like telling us things that we didn't know. And we're like, what? Isn't or that things, great? Or things that we knew that he shouldn't know, you know? So, so back to the algorithm in China, they're pushing education they're pushing fun experiments like a scientific experiment video where the kids are doing it and i'm sure that it's all smoke and mirrors and it's not a lot of what gets promoted is like curated and made for that reason but you can't say that science you know promoting education and science projects and things like that is bad whereas over in america they kind of just let everything flow towards stupidity oh that person you know <laughs> the crazy challenge did you see that oh. video recently it was like tom segura post was posting it uh and it's some guy jumping through like a window a, a, off a balcony and he into a pool but the pool has a glass a glass fence almost like a see-through glass fence and he literally just dives and just hits the fence and goes into the pool and just smashes glass everywhere oh. and it's in a motel or a hotel or something <laughs> it's just like that's what gets promoted on tiktok and and it's just and if you don't think that that sort of subconsciously tells kids in america or in the west let's say let's just make it more broad in the west that you're going to be famous you're going to be rich if you do stupid shit and you, you know yeah, you're you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It's just like that subtle, it's not even subtle, but it's like soft power. It's like pushing <laughs> things into us that, that we think is fun. And it's like, oh, let's do this, let's do this. And then little do we know, like we're way behind in all these, these you know, cultural landmarks. Yeah. Anyway. You know, for a, yeah. a split second, you say that, and then I sat here and went, oh my God, I am sitting here with dumb glasses and a <laughs> house coat. <laughs> Doing the same exact thing that you're talking about. And then I had to go, oh, wait, no, 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 no. I think this is funny. This is for me. I'm doing it for me. Don't let him yeah. mess you up. Like, you're just good. Chill out. You're good. You're good. Yeah. I'm oh. drinking uh, caffeine-free Diet Coke. By the way, they don't sell, like, I don't know, it, maybe it's different in other parts of the country, but, like, I've been having a hard time finding any soda that's caffeine-free. That's cola. Hmm. Cola soda that's caffeine-free. You can find Oh, yeah, because you get the, uh, the stomach rocks. I don't. Yeah, I don't I don't drink a lot of soda, but if I'm going to mix it with mix something with liquor, I like to have Diet Coke or something like that, you know. So, but I don't drink caffeine, and so therefore caffeine free. And uh harder and harder to find, which is like a also probably a cultural thing. Like it just doesn't sell, so they just start not making it. I am uh, definitely having a lot more caffeine than you are, I guess. But you, you haven't, you don't really do caffeine at all anymore. That's what I just said. I don't drink yeah, caffeine. Yeah, yeah that's I haven't, crazy. I haven't. You're since, super uh, active, man. It's weird that you don't have caffeine. Like you're a different kind of person. You know, it's 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 like anything. You know, I have other things that pick me up, and and uh, mainly, honestly, like if you just get warmed up, get your body going, get your body warmed up, get the pl bud, the, sorry, so blood flowing. <laughs> Get the blood, get the flowing. blood flowing and the blood, <laughs> and uh, it, it really does. It's like coffee, you know, for me. And I find myself like same as anybody, not wanting to work out. But as soon as I do, as soon as I do anything, you feel better afterwards. You feel better. You feel yeah. like I'm glad I did that. Now I'm going to eat this candy bar or whatever. <laughs> Man, or whatever. So I I created a drink actually for tonight. Okay. Um. I hadn't been drinking a whole lot because I was getting real into wild turkey honey. Um, just straight up? 
Yeah. Yeah, just shot glass and some Dr. Pepper. Just nailing it. Um, and I'm, I'm actually, I don't like to drink a whole lot. I just kind of like where you end up after you drink, right? So I don't drink beer because it just takes way too long. Um, so what I'll do is I just have a couple shots real fast and then just see where I'm at in like 20 or 30 minutes and then just pound it out again. But we started this keto diet and I can't drink whiskey. Oh, wow. Like it's not a part of it. So I'm like, okay. What can you drink? Well, that's, well, that's what I had to figure out because I really like to drink when I podcast. So I'm like, what am I going to do? So I'll, I'll tell you what, I actually need some and I'll, I'll walk you through it. So sugar-free Sprite, right? Okay. I like sugar-free. And, yes. Sugar-free. I don't know if it has caffeine in it. I'm a, it might. I don't think it does. I don't, I don't think Sprite. I don't think the Sprite 7-Up family does. So, so you prefer Sprite over 7-Up? Uh, no, I don't or like soda don't. at all, actually. So you don't prefer Sprite over 7-Up? You nah. prefer 7-Up over Sprite then? I have no idea. So you don't I'm, know? I don't know. I'm telling you, I, I grabbed a bunch of random stuff because I didn't know what I like. Um, I don't either, by the way. <laughs> vodka is uh, pretty much carb-free. Okay. All of them. So it's all got a little them. bit even, of sugar in it. Even so though. I picked up this stuff called Georgia Peach 360 because it was cheap. It was like nice. $11. Nice. Okay. So I pour that in there like so. Boom. And then here's uh here's the winner. You ready for this? Yeah. Sugar-free Kool-Aid spray. Are you kidding me? No, dude. It's wow. Awesome. You guys do it different in South Carolina. Uh, I'm in North Carolina. And North Carolina. But yeah, I do it different. <laughs> I literally just came up with this tonight and it tastes good. Wow. So okay. And then if if you need a little caffeine. Then you just add some watermelon, bang, Whoa, right in there. That's that's a lot. So this is uh, I call this the explosion. Okay, the explosion. <laughs> I like that. Cheers but, to you. Uh, this is um, yeah, to you man. Good, yeah. But it was literally because I can't drink what I like, so I was yeah. like, I'm just gonna make a. I, th- I think they used to call them suicides and. When I played baseball, like you go up there and you're like, I want a suicide, and they Put it all in. give you like everything. That's basically what I made. Nice. So well, it works. So mine is just Diet Coke, caffeine free, mm-hmm. uh, which I don't like it. Like, I'm not saying I like Diet Coke, caffeine free. It doesn't taste great, but it doesn't taste terrible. It just tastes like kind of like it could taste like Coke with no balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, or, or <clears throat> you know, whatever. Whatever you don't have, ladies. But, uh, <laughs> whatever you might not have. Uh, but the whiskey, Yellow Rose of Texas or Yellow Rose Whiskey or whatever. But uh, it's, You've uh, drank a lot of that. Yeah, I've had this a while. I got this, oh, okay. I think, from Josh, I got it like, uh, Josh Cadman, I think. Uh, I think he's in the fan club. Um, but I went and played at his house, and uh, he gifted me this. So finally, at the very bottom of it, thank you, Josh. Appreciate it. In case you were worried that I wasn't going to actually drink it. And um, I had uh, I had another whiskey from uh, another friend up in uh, Arlington or somewhere in the Dallas Fort Worth area. I played his I played at a, um, a brewery and I can't remember his name right now because I honestly wasn't thinking about it until just now. But my man, you will remember, he's, he's a great guy. He's got a family that loves punk rock, and they've been to a bunch of MXPX shows. But anyway, he gave me a bottle, too, and it was the same weekend. That bottle I drank a long time ago, and then I drank this one after. And I think I've had a couple bottles in between all that, but people give me whiskey. You um, heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. If you would like my career to come play at your house, all you need is <laughs> bottles and bottles of whiskey to gift him. That'd be a Sadly. lot of whiskey. That'd yeah. be a lot of bottles of whiskey. But uh but it doesn't ever it doesn't hurt to to throw a bottle in. I like the glass. Yeah, there you go. So anyway, this is really good whiskey. And uh there's another whiskey called basically I think it's called Texas, like TX or something like that, that I've also been gifted by I can't remember his name, guy in Austin. Yeah, oh that's crazy. Austin San Antonio. But uh yeah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Texas. Texas is big on on gifting their friends whiskey. You know, really? They, yeah. My huh. neighbor down, the, my neighbor, not just a regular neighbor, friends of ours, like we fr- like friends that we like go and have dinner with them, or 
eh, not dinner, but we'd have like hang out and have drinks or something. Um, invite them to our house. They'll go to their house, but they live two, two doors down and they got, we came back to town uh, one time and they like brought us like a bottle of whiskey for me and a bottle of wine for my wife. Like as a, Hey, welcome back. Like, what is that? That's like, Southern hospitality right there. Like I, I nobody does that in That's Bremerton. Awesome, man. Not not that I don't love Bremerton. <clears throat> and and not that you should do it in Bremerton, believe me. But yeah, it's uh it's a trip. So the neighborhood that we live in is getting really so it's a newer neighborhood. I think it's been here for like five years or so. So all, all the houses here are like five years old. It's a pretty, you know, new neighborhood. And and what happens in a place like that is you start to kind of develop what your neighborhood's going to be like as far as Christmas goes. Like, are you going to be a neighborhood that has a lot of Christmas lights? And uh, the first year, not really, but it's it, every year, it looks like it's more and more and more. And I think we're going to end up being one of those neighborhoods that's like full of Christmas lights, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, what our neighborhood is really good at is Halloween. Like other people's neighborhoods are starting to come here. Dude, that's trick or treat. my neighborhood. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So Go when ahead. you walk... Yeah and go take your kids trick or treating. I don't know man, probably 50% of the people they give the adults some kind of adult treat. Oh with nice. Kids. So like yeah. I have like a shot mm -hmm. every time the kids stop and get candy somewhere. Like it's great. It's great. I love it. Mm. Um but I'm at the same time I'm not super big on all the people so close. Mm -hmm. I, I grew up, you know, in the country kind of separated. Yeah. And this, this is a lot. There's a, like, there's people everywhere like, all the time. And I, I'm, I'm not down for it. I like going to the city. I don't necessarily want to live there. Right. That, that makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. We, we live, you know, our, our, in Texas, we have a neighborhood that's, it's very much in the city. It's not downtown, but it's in the city and it is huge for Halloween my neighbor has like a DJ, like seriously, like really? so you're walking up and it's like, mm, sh -sh 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 -sh, you know, like there's music jamming and there's like a trailer with like all this like fog and lights and a light show. And it's like, so it gets into like hip hop and rave and I don't know who chooses the playlist it probably changes every year, but <clears throat> DJ and they have like karaoke. Um, after everybody leaves, they'll just keep partying and have karaoke. Um, but, they'll most years they'll they'll block off the street and they'll actually have like a cop they'll hire a cop to come out and people show up and park and droves of people get out of their cars and walk up and down and it's like whoa and we're just going we're just walk out of our house right there um i, I felt good about my neighborhood for a minute <laughs> and yeah you tell me this story and i'm like oh well his his neighborhood celebrates halloween that's yeah, it's like, insane. We're like, my neighborhood doesn't have to hire cops. So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but but in in Bremerton, nothing. I mean, we get no. We're not on the street. We're off the street. And well, you guys uh, don't have good weather there, right? And the weather is not as good. Yeah, yeah that, prob that, that probably just dampens people's spirit in general. There's probably a bunch of people walking around Bremerton just like. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like, I'm not, you know, it's, I, I say that to be a little bit funny, but it's got to hold some kind of truth. I mean, like if you live somewhere that's sunny and warm and nice, you're probably going to be different than if you lived in an area that's kind of rainy all the time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So we, we live in an area where it's hot and then freezing the next day <laughs> and then the hot the next day. That's the same as Texas. But what we have here is humidity to a degree that it's almost unbearable sometimes. Like you can walk outside, it'll be like 91 degrees, which doesn't sound out of control, but like the air is thick and mm -hmm. it's like soggy. And I walk outside, I start sweating immediately. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I've, I did a really good job at work and I can afford a house. I'm just going to go hang out in there for a while. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's really what happened to me, man. Like, I just don't like being outside here. I I had a job offer in Alaska, um, wow, long, 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 long time ago, and I was, I was going like Anchorage I was going to go where. Uh, I don't know. It's it was, I it was somewhere around there. The dude owned a like a mining thing, 
Mm. Um, and what he was going to have me come out there to do was, uh, basically be a manager. Um, the trouble he was having was people wouldn't show up to work. Sometimes they just like get drunk, come in like half a day. And he's like, man, I can't fire anybody because there's, <laughs> there's not a lot of people up here. So like, you know, he, and he's like, I just need somebody to be able to handle these problems when the employees don't show up, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, he had a trailer he was going to let me live in on his property. And when he told me that I was like a trailer, I don't know that I want to <laughs> go out yeah. to Alaska and live in a trailer. And then I looked up how much a trailer cost to live in in Alaska and rent for a trailer is like $1,900 a month. So what? I was like, oh, and he's going to let me stay in one of these for free. That's pretty, pretty generous. But Why uh, so much? Everything's expensive there, I guess. I wow. don't know. Okay. Um, I could be way wrong. I could have looked up some website and had wrong information, but it seemed out of control. Um, that does seem a little I, out of control, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I started hanging out with Katie and things were getting serious and I chose her over Alaska. That's why I'm still here. Nice. So speaking of Alaska, I've, I've read a lot of books about Alaska, but I've been there. It's amazing. Um, I don't know if I'd want to live there, but I, I guess I wouldn't mind living there if the, under the right circumstances, you're, it's so far from everything. Yeah. I'd live there for a little while, probably not permanently. I just read this book, um, called North wind. It's right, here it is. Library book, a real book. So, well, oh, you have a legitimate book a with like real paper book. in it and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't so, know, man. It looks pretty new. Did you really read it? I did. Yeah, it's a library book. Okay. It's North Wind by Gary Paulson, which he's one of my favorite authors. He's a an author. He's he's written like over a thousand. I don't know. Actually, it probably says something back here. He's written um, more than two hundred books for children and adults, including his recent memoir, Gone to the Woods: Surviving a Lost Childhood. Anyway. Uh, I found him through Hatchet. His his kind of most famous book is Hatchet, and it's a survival novel, and it's really amazing. And most like kind of like young adults uh, discover it. Um, I discovered it as a full grown adult. If you Hatchet, can, if you can even say, yeah, Hatchet. But then I started reading tons of his books. Tons. I'm gonna read it. And this is his last book. I don't know if it's his very last book, but this book just came out. It's his newest book. Came out in, I would assume, 2021. And uh, he died in 2021. Oh. He passed away. Way to take that story down. Yeah, I know. But he he was he was kind of old. He was up there. No, it came out in 2022. It came out just this year. And um, it's a really great book, North Wind. Gary it's a, Paulson, yeah. It's about it sailing. It's about sailing through the Northwest. Um that's a terrible description, to be honest. It's uh, a journey of a boy on the knife edge between life and death where the raging seas meet a northern wilderness. So this kid is in a canoe and he's just paddling. There's more to it than that, too, but like whales, bears, he's he's spearfishing and it takes place basically in the in some mythical time. I don't know when it is. It's the time of maybe in the 1800s it could have been, but it doesn't actually It's a mythical say. time, the 1800s. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, Jesus, That's as Mike. mythical as it gets to me. <laughs> it's a mythical time. It probably didn't exist. Somebody made that up. <laughs> but it was so poetic. Like His books are great, but this one was even better. Maybe because it was last his last book. Maybe because... I knew that he had passed away and this, you know, whatever it was. But I don't think that I think if you just read this book and you knew nothing about the author, you would you would find it to be really good. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And it was an easy read. It's a quick read. A couple, a couple hundred pages or so. so we, I'm on, go ahead. We don't watch uh, TV a lot, but we stumbled across this show called Alone. Have you heard of that? You haven't been listening to my podcast very long, have you? What do you mean? Producer Bob, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. Have you talked about it? I have it? talked about Alone so many times on the podcast. It's Shut not even up. funny. When's the last time you talked it's about it? It's been over a year, but it's been like during the pandemic for sure. No way. Talked about Alone constantly because you know, I, I don't be paying attention to what you said. I didn't think so. It's okay. But I definitely talked about Alone and how we we're obsessed with it. We found it during the pandemic oh. when we were just finding something to watch that was relaxing. And Alone is... I wouldn't Dude. say it's relaxing, but it kind of is to me because it feels like you're watching somebody go camping. So we started watching it. 
I'm going to take my glasses off so I can okay. focus because I'm, I'm real excited about the conversation now. <laughs> Holy crap, it's good. First of all, I'm embarrassed that you've talked about it and I just didn't pick up on it. I probably just wasn't watching it at the time because I, I know for a fact now that if you talked about it, I would be sure, like, sure. hooked. We've only been watching it for about a month and a half. So it's been very recent. And uh, we've gone through, we're on our third season already. Right, right. I it's think I've watched all the seasons. It's nuts, yeah. man. It's nuts. So when you brought up the hatchet, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna check that out for sure. Because I'm. Have you bought any? Have you thought about going camping since you started watching it? Were you like, we should go camping? No. <laughs> no. No. I know. Easily, I know how it is. I'm easily influenced. I've been camping. We, I'm, <laughs> I do like camping, but not the right, not the right situation right now. But go ahead. Sorry. This is gonna be our 15 year anniversary this year, and we're yeah. gonna go camping. <laughs> you know what you can get? You can get a sleeping bag. That, uh -huh. that charges, like you hook up to the wall and then it's ready to go, it's charged. And when you get out in, and it's cold, it warms up. Yeah, they didn't have that on alone. No, they didn't have that on alone. No. But that's my kind of sleeping bag. To be fair, <laughs> we're not really going camping. Um, we are going to, uh, it's called Tiny Cabin or something like that. It looks like this like park or something where they have these little tiny trailers. There's like a bed inside a tiny little stove and that's pretty much it. Maybe like a little refrigerator. And mm. then right outside you have like a, a fire pit and some chairs and things like that. And there's just nothing there. There's no Wi-Fi, like nothing, but it has air conditioning inside the, wow. <laughs> the little room. Nice. So it's not really like we're going like roughing it. We're not going to be eating rats or anything. It's you know it's going to be fine, but uh, I think that's what we're going to do, and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, that'll be like that'll be fun. just to get away from everybody. Oh, and the bed, it's uh, I think it's got like a queen size bed, and that whole wall is just nothing but like a window, and you just see out into like you know, the mountains or a lake or you know wherever it is that you end up staying. Yeah. You know, I, you know, going back to like just alone in, in general, just watching that show, you can't help but learn a little bit. You learn, yes. you learn how hard it is to survive for one, but you also learn things that I didn't know. Like this will be helpful for people. Uh, hopefully uh, meat, you know, when you, one of the guys got, <laughs> got a moose and oh, I that's a seen giant that. animal. Uh, you'll, you'll get there eventually. It won't spoil it. I don't think, but, uh, but basically what I learned, I'll, I'll try not to spoil it for you by telling you this. What I learned is you need not just meat, you need pro you need fat, yep. you need protein with fat. So people will actually starve when they have just meat, really lean meat, any kind mm -hmm. of deer, moose, those, those are very lean, gamey animals and rabbits, same thing. If there's not, a, if you don't eat the fat and so. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but some things happen and there's a reason why he doesn't, you know, he's starving and he's got this moose, you know, and it's crazy. But, um, just knowing that like, okay, you can't just eat one thing. You have to have a mix of things as a human. We need, we need protein. We need fat. We need to mix those together. We need greens, you know, all of that. So, you know, just, and then with these books that I've been reading, just learning, whether or not you're you know, just getting being ready for if, it, if it really goes down, Mike's gonna be like, I know how to handle it. Well, I've watched Alone and I've read Hatchet. We're good to go. Th that's the thing is, I I absolutely don't think so. Like I I I think it would be rough, <laughs> especially me being cold all the time. I'm like cold even you know in sixty degree weather, but um, I would say, I would say I at least kind of know some things you should do. Now I don't think they would be easy to do. Okay, we need to catch some fish. We need to smoke the fish, you know. And okay, I could, I can clean a fish. I've cleaned a fish before. I've gone fishing. I don't know I've cleaned how to clean a fish. fish. It's been a while, and I would have to like, kind of like, oh, I guess this is the way to do it. But I've cleaned crabs. I've talked about that on the podcast. Do you remember anything about me cleaning crabs? Yes, it was a a neighbor or something dropped them off. Yes. Look, see, I I listen. Okay, to all right. Little, little pop yeah, quiz. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, like that's like my my. Uh, intro to like survival is like <laughs> crushing you know, these crabs. One of, the, one of the tips that I learned was uh, if you're in the woods and you got to make a fire, the wood that you should go after are trees that fell but didn't land on the ground. 
like trees that like you know died yeah. but they're leaning on something leaning. because they're not More on the ground staying wet yeah that's a good thing go ahead my favorite scene so far <laughs> okay. my favorite scene was there was this guy and they were showing him before he left to go on the island with his family and he was like yeah i was in the military i feel real good about all of this i'm gonna get out there i'm gonna use my skills it's gonna be great and i looked at my wife and i was like he's not gonna make it yeah like i, I just yeah. knew him. he was used to being too braggy and uh they he rode up on a boat and they they pan out with the camera and the boat is leaving and you see it in his face he's like hmm. oh and he called them back before the sun went down. He was like, I didn't think this is what it was. Like that boat flew away or, you know, floated away. And he was sitting there like, there's nothing. There's nothing. What did he think there was going to be? I don't know. But it was my favorite part. He gave up real. He didn't even get hungry. He's like, nah, I, you know what? This is, Come on back. I'm done. Caffeine free Diet Coke. Oh, there's none. Yeah. All right. I'm out of here. Man, oh, that show is yeah, so you, good. You know, you know the people that aren't gonna make it. It's anybody that's braggy, anybody yeah. that's like talking like they're the best and they got this, no problem. Mm -hmm. And it's like there was another guy kind of early on, kind of like that. He was like, ah, I got this, and then he heard the bears. He spent one night, and there was oh, like no, a no, no. It was uh, there. it was uh, wolves. A wolf. Yeah. He was like, you know what? I, I can make a fire and I know how to survive there, but I don't got a gun. I was like, I can't be out here. <laughs> he was yeah. like, there were wolves right up there. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. He got out of there real quick. It was wolves. Um, Man, that I mean, that's the thing. I'm not trying to deal with wildlife, but uh, I ordered I ordered a ferro rod because of this show. Oh, okay. That's I was like, I don't know how idea. to do this. I should probably um, order one. It. Uh, let me tell you what. Order one. <laughs> order one <laughs> order one i'm gonna order a fire maker <laughs> yeah because i'm a survivalist uh i did I, this is what i learned about that it, you can go to like walmart and it, they have like a hunting aisle and they'll sell some kind of weird pack you know like buy this pack and you get a hatchet and a knife and they'll have like a little ferro rod mm -hmm. but i found out those are garbage yeah like I'm if sure. you're gonna have a ferro rod it needs to be like long and thick it's just got to be long because you'll thick. break it yeah yeah well, <laughs> but uh, no, I ordered one and uh, my dad had hip surgery. So I had to take off for work and uh, I went and stayed with him and like kind of just like helped him out. But I was doing some yard work and I knew I was going to burn some stuff. So I was like, I'm going to use a fair rod. I'm going to start fire like a man. And uh, so I ordered it, went out there and it, it's not easy. Right. Not takes, easy. How long yeah. did it take you? Uh, it took me about 15 minutes to get, <laughs> get the fire going. Crazy. So. Well, something I read in this book, by the time somebody reads it, if they do, it's not really like a spoiler alert. It's just this kid was taught by old Carl. Old Carl comes back up in the book a lot. Um, old Carl told him to to find a basically like either a squirrel nest or a rat's nest, and they're usually underneath those trees, and so you can they're buried underneath stuff. So like he would always go to these new sites, and he knew where to look. And he would find like some nest and then use that as a like squirrels? a squirrel nest, yeah, like yeah. an old squirrel nest, like a okay. abandoned squirrel nest. Take that and and use that as tinder to start yes. a fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Um, you know what else is really good? Dryer lint. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> All right. Amazing. Yeah, like when you clean out your dryer lint, like fill a couple little Ziploc bags up and just stick them somewhere. That stuff starts fire real fast that's a good that's interesting that's like real world application yeah, yeah. right there I, I have two bags of it downstairs right now <laughs> like it's just you know just sitting somewhere because yeah if you ever got to start one like that stuff i mean houses burn down yeah because they yeah. don't clean that stuff and it gets oh, right. hot and and burst yeah it's super flammable you better be careful where you put that in your house yeah so it doesn't burn down yeah yeah Got it's on a shelf the extra stuff yeah, but we'll you never okay. know. We're going to be okay. Maybe not. <laughs> Starts taking over. But uh, no, I I really got into that show, man. I got hooked hard. I did get uncomfortable one time. There was a guy. You know what? There's like eight or nine seasons in, right? I think seven or eight, yeah. Okay, well, this is like season two or something, so I'm, I'm going to spoil it. Uh, his name was Larry. When Larry first started out, he was angry like he was walking through the woods he was hitting things he was cussing 
I know who you're talking thing. about. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, real angry dude, man. And about 45 days in, he broke. Like it just it broke him. Um, there was this one scene where he was leaning over a five gallon bucket and he's just screaming like at the ground. He's like, ah, I'm so hungry. Everything hurts. Ah. And I'm sitting in my house. I'm freaked <laughs> out. I'm like, bro, go home. Like, just don't do it anymore. Like, oh my God. I, that same night we had ordered a, a salad from Subway. I got like this meat salad and oh, it's delicious. And I was trying to eat it and I, I didn't enjoy it because he was starving and I could see it, it was very, very uncomfortable. Um, but I'm going to keep watching it. Apparently. And, and apparently when you starve for that long, it, it messes you up for a long time. You don't just like, yeah. okay, let me just start eating now. Like you have to like really take it easy. Cause your body, your organs start shutting down and, and failing after you've not eaten for so long. And, uh, it, it's just trip though. It's just a trip because they have to have these medical checkups and you just see them so skinny towards the end of the shows it's nuts that is one killer diet i'll tell you that but it just it leaves a lot of long-term problems with people whereas like you know i've seen some of the the uh interviews after the show and they'll be like yeah i'm still like i'm okay but i'm still like having issues and it's probably people that didn't even win yeah. That, oh, uh, probably. That yeah. Sucks. Anybody could deal with that. Yeah. It's always heartbreaking when somebody gets injured and has to go home. I I just saw my first person get injured not too long. It was a it was a female. She cut her hand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I saw it happen, and I went, "Oh!" You knew that was going to happen. When I'm like, it happened. Oh, You're she's like, out. She and she was doing good too. That's the sad part. Oh, yeah. She was doing well. She was doing well. I know we've been talking about this show a lot, but I don't care. Dude. I gotta, I'm I gotta say, I'm having a blast. I gotta say, it's crazy that some of the females have, and some of the males too, but some of the guys, some of the girls, have amazing shelters. Like a shelter, yeah. you'd be like, I'd stay there. That's amazing. That looks awesome. And then some of the mostly guys, all the females for the most part, have had decent shelters, but. I don't know why that is, but the, some of the guys just like, they never get it together. They never put in the work or whatever. And they just have a real crappy lean to, or this or that. And they'll say it. They'll be like, well, for this one, I'm, I'm going to go real simple. I'm just going to hang the tarp. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, I don't think this, and, and that same dude woke up and be like, everything's flooded. So I guess I got to move again. Yeah. Yeah. There was one dude that made, there was, there was a guy, he, he pretty much made a house. Mm-hmm, he had mm-hmm. like a table and a game and like chairs and like all kinds of stuff. And I was like, this dude's going to win. Like he had food, like he was killing it. And he's like, I really, he had a wife or something. He missed he, his wife. Yeah. I, like, I miss her. I think I I'm going like, to go home. That guy's done. Like, and the people showed up. He was good. Like he was healthy. Like, yeah, he's going to go home. And I'm like, Oh my God, I don't know. I could use $500,000. I don't know what this cat's doing, man. He must be right. You know what, though? This is what I thought. He did so well that I was like, he's got money. Because only someone this good at this stuff has the free time to be that good at that stuff. Interesting. You have that kind of free time. You got money. There's guys on there that are like professional um, survivalists or survival guides. And they've even gone in and just been like, man, this is a lot harder than I thought. This is gnarly, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Man. Oh, such a good show. We, we've, yeah, we have talked about it for far. It's been far a while. Uh, so yeah, I was just going to end with this, a, a personal story about my childhood. I went camping. Um, I don't know if it was like with the youth group or something like that, but I went camping in the Washington national rainforest and it was a great day right next to a river. We, you know, camped and did a bunch of fun activities and then we're sleeping. It's raining and the whole rainforest is just lush green moss everywhere. Everything's moss. Everything's covered in green. Beautiful, really cool looking, but damp. And so, you know, okay, well, cool. Well, we're going to camp. So we go sleep. We're in our sleeping bags in our tent and it's raining and raining. And oh, I wake worst. up, I wake oh. up in a puddle of, I wake up to just feeling cold, cold water seeping up my back. I'm like, ah, 
And that was the longest night I've ever had that I can remember. I'm sure I have probably had a few other long nights, but that was a long night. And I was just kind of just up and I was like up and I tried to find a place to, to sleep, but like there was just really nothing you can do. And it was dark and everybody it sucks. And you're wondering, is everybody else sleeping? They're finding the other tents, but I don't, you know, so you just kind of do your thing and survive the night. But that was miserable, miserable. And I'm sure out. that those guys deal with it, mul- you know, all night, every day of the week or every night of the week. A bunch of the guys in my family went out one time and uh, our plan was we're going to take some snacks. But we're going to stay out there for a few days and we're going to fish and hunt. And that's going to be that's going to be food. Right. That's like we, we're going to go out there and find this food. And uh, I, I went to sleep one night and I woke up and. I was inside my sleeping bag. Like that's how cold it was. Like mm-hmm. I was inside and I had it closed and my mouth was dry and I reached out of my sleeping bag and grabbed my bottle of water and it was frozen. And I was like, holy crap. So <laughs> I grabbed my cell phone, which we had, I had my cell phone with me, but it was powered off and I powered it on and checked the weather. And it was like seven degrees <laughs> or Whoa. something like that. It was stupid and i was like oh my god so i got up and we had a fire burning and i was like i gotta go by the fire like it is it's flipping cold and i would sit by the fire and constantly just have to like turn around because my whatever side wasn't facing the fire was just awfully cold and i ended up falling asleep at one point just like sitting you know in a chair with my feet up by the fire and i woke up because my shoes were smoking like I had put my feet so close to the fire yeah. that like my shoes started to melt. Yeah. Like there was smoke coming off of them. Man, you know what else happened the next morning? Uh, we had pop tarts. Had a box of pop tarts with me, and I was gonna be smart and be like, I'm gonna cook my pop tart over the fire. Well, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, don't do it. It's not okay because when you cook a pop tart over a fire. The icing melts, but it doesn't look like it melted. So I pulled this Pop-Tart out, Mm. and the icing just poured off of it like water and went across my thumb, and it burned me worse than anything I have ever experienced in my life. My whole thumb just swole up. I was sticking it on metal parts of the chair, and it was like 17 degrees outside, just trying to like make the burning stop. I don't think I ate pop tarts for like a year after that. Like it was awful, 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 awful. That's a rough start to your morning, but uh, a long night. So <laughs> what ended up happening was uh, it was so cold. All the bait froze. Like we couldn't fish. So naturally we sent somebody to the grocery store and they <laughs> They bought some fish and we brought it back and, and cooked it at the camp. And let me tell you what, it was three days in, best fish I ever had in my life. I don't even like fish. Yeah. But by that point, the only thing we had eaten was like some pop tarts and some trail mix. So it was a, uh, it was like the best meal of my life. <laughs> just some, just fish we cooked that we didn't even catch. We couldn't catch any fish. Everything was frozen. Yeah. But it was a fun time. Amazing. It was a fun time. That's fun. That's fun. I've got, a, I've got a bunch of different camping stories, but we'll, we'll save that for next time. Let's wrap it up. Um, episode 500. Episode 500. We'll do it. We'll do it. Yeah. This has been good. Thank you, dude. Thank you for for not only being on episode 400, but for producing the podcast, for helping me out untold amount of times. So I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I've learned a lot. And uh, regardless of how you feel about yourself, your work ethic is out of control. Like, oh. it's it's really wild. You've got amazing work, that, work ethic. Um, I've learned a lot. So I started, I want to say it was episode 164, 165, um, a fat wreck. Okay. And that was uh, your first one, huh? Yeah, it was my first one. Um, so yeah, over, over 200 episodes now. And I've got to learn a lot of things like about just your design, really just how you make everything look professional. I I realized like my stuff's horrible like all the time. So like anything that I've done that's gotten better, it's because I've been learning from you. That's why I keep hanging around. Well, thanks. So man. I appreciate it, man. Cool. Glad you noticed. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just ready to get back and um, 
do some shows. MXPX got a couple shows coming up in April. That's getting close. So I put together a set list. Um, I, you know, it'll be good. By the way, you guys Anna, gotta come over here. Anaheim, low tickets. Anaheim first. Uh, Anaheim House of Blues, low ticket alert. If you want to go and you don't have a ticket, you got to get them soon because they're almost gone. And once they're gone, they're not gonna release tickets day of. And a lot of times, they will release tickets day of. But Anaheim, they're not going to. But sometimes they will. Anaheim ain't gonna happen. Um, and then April second, we're doing Marquee Theater in Phoenix, Arizona. I think nice. there's tickets left for that, but please get them. I mean, if you're going to go, get them. But, uh, yeah, besides that, man, I mean, working on a few little things, trying to keep this podcast afloat, trying to trying to get guests here and there. Um, but I, at the same time, not trying to get guests too stacked up ahead of time to where, I don't know, I just feel weird about doing, doing a podcast two months before it's going to air. So I like to yeah. do it a week before or maybe two weeks at the most, but that's about it. So it's probably you know, can, not a good thing to be honest professionally, but I can vouch for you on this actually. Um, because a lot of times I'll get, you know, I get the podcast and I'll, I'll hear you talk for like a couple of minutes before, you know, the episode actually starts. And I am, I'm very confident in saying that you like doing this, like you enjoy it, but you don't really care about the business part of the podcast. Like I even, you know, I sent you a message a couple of weeks ago. We talked about it and I was like, Hey, 400 coming up. Like, let's, let's get it together. And you're like, ah, let's do a podcast. It's going to be fine. Like <laughs> it's, it's really cool the way that you treat your podcast. Like you, you can tell that you really do it because you just enjoy talking to people and having a good time. So that, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I have to strive real hard to get my stuff out there way harder than what you do. And it kind of takes a little bit of the fun away from it. So I'm a, I'm a little jealous. That's pretty awesome. I hear you. I mean, just don't try so hard. Just have fun with what you do and make I sure it hard. gets out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. All right, well, um, anything else you want to leave us with, Mr. Producer, Mr. Bob? Uh, go be nice to somebody. Yeah, make That's somebody's it. day. That's all we can really do. You know, when we live in a world where you don't have a, lot, a whole lot of control over the the big picture of the world and where where we're headed, you do have that choice to be nice to somebody, to make somebody's day, to give somebody a compliment. Men don't get a lot of compliments, do they? I don't, uh, know, I don't know how to take them, by the way. <laughs> I don't, I've been, man, you know what? I've been getting quite a few recently. Um I lost almost 30 pounds weird? so far. Is it good? Does it make you feel and, good? Yeah, no, no, it's good. I lost a lot of weight and people are talking about it. Good. And uh, it gets weird. Like there was a, <laughs> this one lady, um, I can't say too much, but uh, I, I walked near this person and I heard, I heard someone go, hmm. And I was like, obviously that wasn't <laughs> about me. And uh, anyways, I was walking past these, uh, these two ladies that, that were working and I go, oh, you guys having a good day? And she goes, I am now. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, I heard nothing like that in a long time. But no, yeah, you're right. Not a lot of compliments. <laughs> but when, uh, when you do, man, make sure you I'm blushing right now. Let me yeah. blush right now. Super nice lady. Um, oh, and she was like twice my age. That's the best part. She's like yeah, 65. there you go. See, see? Yeah, that makes so, you feel good. No, it's but yeah, all good fun. There's a lot of negativity out there. Not a lot of not a lot of love, and we need a lot more of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that the, it's a lot easier to spread negativity than it is to spread love, and and the, so the love is there. It's just hard to see. It's harder to know. It's harder to feel. Feel the love, everybody. Bob McKnight. Thanks, Mike. Everybody I appreciate check, it, buddy. Check out the Bob and Katie show. I always say it at the end of every podcast just about every podcast but uh you know what's funny about that i don't want you to stop doing it i love it i love the attention it makes me feel good inside yeah but i've had more people recently like notice me because of that versus my own show like <laughs> like i'll have people come up to me sometimes in public and they'll be like oh you're I, I listen to your show I'm like awesome but i've had a lot more people recently go oh you're the guy that works on mike's show and i'm like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so perfect so i appreciate it man no worries, man. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. All right. Until next time.